because you know you're out of the agency and obviously public either they passed or got arrested but but a public a public figure that when you were investigating them that you kind of were impressed they were hard to get never caught them on tape it took a while or maybe they died in the road bed if you can maybe give those little bone on who's one guy you actually admired you're like that motherfucker he, he he was good i couldn't get him or maybe you got him and it took a while who is somebody that that's worth mentioning that you're able to mention oh man um I don't know, there's a lot of them a lot of these guys like you know they you, you didn't fear them but you looked at them and went man this guy's a He's a, he's the definition of a gangster. A lot yeah. of the old school guys, a lot of the guys like going back to the seventies and eighties, yeah. guys that had a rep. You went, just being around them, um, you know, it's the funniest thing. Like I just doing a search warrant on a guy, one, an arrest warrant on a guy one day. I forget his name, but he was a made guy in one of the families, and he just didn't want to open the door. You know, blind in one eye, and we're knocking on the door, knocking on a window, telling, and just basically, I don't know, I don't want to use the wrong language on your show, but you know, get the F out of here. I'm not opening the door. Call my attorney. Like, you know, yeah. Are you around these guys or just sometimes just going in high profile guys. I don't want to name names because some yeah. of them are still alive, but Got it. I walked in the house and, you know, I mean, you could tell like they, they, they commanded the room, even though FBI agents, young FBI agents were there to arrest them. These guys, man, they were the big shots. They were the big dog in the room, you know? Wow. And it's funny because they'd always smell the stink on me, the Hudson County stink. <laughs> You know? And they'd always ask like, who, who are you or something like that? Not to, not to toot my own horn. I'm not yeah. trying to, but just to tell you like the sense that these guys had for the street, yeah. they would look and go, which one of these is not like the other, this guy here, where are you from? Why are you in my house? You know, why are you dressed like me? Or, you know, if I went out to help on an arrest, you know, when I took a break from doing other cover work or something and yeah, these guys were hardcore dudes, but uh, I, you know, I actually, back in the day when I, I was a young cop, and uh, I was still living in Bayonne and I, I walked down the street and at the time, my fiance at the time was wanted to get some vegetables. And it was a, a vegetable place on Broadway we went to. And I went there maybe six o'clock at night. It's usually open till about 10. She, you know, pulls the door handle. It's locked. Lights are on in the back. And it wound up being John Gotti. Oh, and wow. He, he owned a joint. He, he had an interest in it. And we kind of knew it. Everybody kind of knew in the neighborhood, but yeah. nobody ever cared. And uh, there he was in the back with this big jumbo dude. And, you know, the guy comes out and gives the old, we're closed. Yeah. You know? And my my fiance at the time was not from the area. She didn't understand the life in the neighborhood. And she wants to argue with this big mama Luke. You know, it's, you know, it's six o'clock. What do you mean you're closed? Ten o'clock. That's and then he, you know, John peeks his head out. <laughs> and, you know, he peeks his head out. And just as soon as I saw it, we were, you know, I, even though I was a cop, I'm like, we're done. We're done. We're out of here. Let's go. So I got a, a little different, different line of questioning for a minute. Um, and, and Jason just texted me. He said that uh, Giovanni had a green Sergio Tacchini suit for undercover uh, jumpsuit and a red one for going out, but he never wore either in mixed world. So so good job on that, Giovanni. I think that was a smart move. Just kidding. Um, um, so I I, I, uh, I was in corporate in the 90s. I, you know, graduated um, you know, high school. I went to work. I graduated college. I wanted to work in corporate. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I'm mid-90s now and, um, you know, late 90s. And we're talking about, you know, the real Sopranos. And in corporate, it was like I was Italian. All of a sudden, people throw more expletives, you know, when they speak to me or change their tone. Oh, hey, you're Italian. Hey, oh, like, I'm sitting there, I'm like you know. So, and I hate to say this, and I don't want to get you in trouble, Giovanni, but I'm looking to try to get you in trouble. How was the agency in the you know 80s, 90s, you being an Italian from Jersey? You know, give us like you going to the agency. Were there Italians there? Were there not Italians there? I can't imagine it's not similar to my experience in corporate. No, there were Italians there. And, and you know, they they had an understanding of the life. I wasn't the only guy that came from the neighborhood. There were a lot of good FBI agents I met along the way that were able to as investigators understand the life and, and be fair and balanced. Right. Yeah. Because again, Tom, you and I have talked about cultural and yep. you know, having, having to understand the impact 